scientists who were telling me what was going on, that the Fed was desperate, and that literally the late-night meetings at Citibank before it crashed and what was going on. I, I was literally privy to the conversation that was going on the night it happened when Bear Stearns was, I think, on Friday worth $54. I got a call that night saying they're going to crash Bear Stearns. Watch what it goes to Monday. And, by the way, I don't play the, the stock market, right. so I didn't go short or anything. And that's when Bear Stearns was basically effectively thrown to the lions. But it's more than that, Steve. It's, it's I'm not linear, okay? And to answer your question, how do I know? I am not linear. But as you know, too, I'm a guy, I believe in prayer. I don't believe in the evangelical uh, modern-day uh, Christian representation. And, by the way, when you were helping the Russian Christians get out of Moscow, I was protesting in D.C. at the uh, Russian embassy. I, I, I find that interesting. When oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, we seem to cross over. Yeah, I, I never, I never knew you, of course, before I met you. But no. here's the thing: what one of the people I think what the, the audience should know is uh, when I first came in under the Nixon administration, one of my first jobs as a psychiatrist was again, it was a volunteer job where I went over the Soviet Union when the Soviets were using a very clever technique developed by the KGB, which was to incarcerate. Christian dissidents, not, not just Jewish, but really Christian dissidents, because they were far more recalcitrant, particularly Baptist, Anabaptist, fundamentalist, to the communist ideology. And, and Andropov, then who was head of the KGB or Chika, uh, created a system through the psychiatric hospitals in, in Moscow. Uh, one of them was Kachenko Psychiatric Hospital, which was run by a former Stalinist doctor whom I dealt with. And what they did was to incarcerate the Christians under a, a new term that they created in uh, medicine, in psychiatry, called sluggish schizophrenia. It never existed. And it was their way of obviating a court system or any legal papers where independently we could check on why the dissidents were put into prison camps. They weren't. They were put into psychiatric hospitals. So my job was to go in there and figure out the strategy and the tactics to take the Christians out without necessarily creating a confrontation with the Soviets or military confrontation but at the same time be able to make an exit strategy which was quiet and effective. And uh, I basically created a fungible asset. In other words, thousands, hundreds of Christians were, were released out of, the, out of the psychiatric hospitals where they were tortured, actually. Absolutely. Uh, for being Christians, which is something most Christians don't understand. The Christians have been tortured for many, many years through many administrations, and particularly under the communist system, because... They would not accept the communist ideology. As a result of that, I went on on the Club 700 show. But basically what I was trying to do in a book I wrote called The Mind Palace was trying to explain how the Russians used very Machiavellian techniques to destroy the backbone of Christianity by incarcerating them, not in prison camps or the gulags, but incarcerating them in psychiatric hospitals with artificial diagnoses that did not exist in the mental health uh, field. And so uh, not only did I destroy the, the, the diagnosis and say it didn't exist, but basically I started to get Christians out by saying, okay, uh, we're going to trade them for Wang computers in those days. So that's what you were talking about and you were demonstrating in front of the uh, Russian uh, embassy. Right, because at that point, if you remember, there were about, oh, good night in the U.S. embassy too. We, and that's where a mutual nemesis of ours that, uh, was, uh, uh, oh, good night, making it difficult. We, we had the Christians in the seeking in Moscow. I think it was the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. They had asked for diplomatic immunity. That's correct. And, uh, remember that. Uh, and, and what's his name? Richard, um, uh, what's the name of the guy? Armitage. Oh, Armitage, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I call him Armitage. You, Armitage or Armitage. You know, there was a lot of effort to keep the Christians, uh, you know, uh, let's say this. Actually, those people wanted to give the Christians back to the KGB, okay? Oh, yeah. And we had a, we had a, I was with a, a wonderful organization those days called Youth with a Mission. I was, I don't know, 22 or 23 years old in those days. But the thing is, is that we we're drawing attention. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Steve and I get into some serious discussions, but let me say the answer to this is this. I believe, and you know that I believe that God, the God of heaven, speaks through uh, people that he raised up to be watchmen, okay? And in essence, Steve, you've been, you know, you've been uh, defending the right of Christians to believe what they believe, even though you and I basically don't see eye to eye on everything. No, but, but I, I don't want to be seen in an angel of mercy. I've been called by Noriega. An assassin. I've been called by the terrorist, the Red Brigade, an assassin. 
right. I've been called. Oh, I'm not calling you an angel of mercy. I'm just well, saying. I, I'm not, <laughs> that's not even. I'm not even going there. I'm just saying that the thing is, is that people need to understand the vilification is on now. The same spirit, if you will, the same psychology, the same mental processes that called the Christians. Uh, mental patients, or, or define them as mental patients, to lock them up. By the way, that's the same thing that's going on in this country. It had to make you crazy. And remember when Department of Homeland Security said that veterans are terrorists? Yes, I'm a veteran, and I couldn't believe that. I, it, uh, give them the exact uh, situation, because you're more aware of that. And I, when I heard that, I just... Right, I well, the Department of Homeland Security put out a report in which they were identifying potential threats of terrorism, domestic terrorism, under that were, you're going to love this, veterans, okay? Right. Under that were Christians. Under that were constitutionalists. Under that were people that quoted the Bill of Rights. Under that were people that talked about the founding fathers, tax protesters. It went on and on and on. Basically, anybody who had a value that was not based on some form of secularism was considered the enemy. And now this is really critical the VFW and different uh, veterans organizations raised a stink, and rightly so. But you and I both know that once that thought is placed out there, this is the whole goal of, of the mind-controlling Illuminists, those who believe that they are going to basically take over the world and set up their kingdom of hell on earth. And those are my words. But the thing that you need to understand, Steve, is the fact that when they did that, then different states adopted that, Virginia, Missouri, and they came out with the MAAC or M MIAC report, and the same thing. It's constantly, in other words, it's the continual reinforcement that veterans are evil, that Christians are evil. It's the same KGB plan that you fought literally against the Cold War. I think what's important is to understand to the audience that psychological operations and psychological warfare is not something alien to our American way of life. In other words, if you're an entity called, be it government, power, Blackwater, you need to control people who are under you. By necessity, it's a virtue of the system. Uh, whether you call Republicans, Democrats, they want you in, in a certain order, in a certain hierarchical fashion. To do so, it's what uh, uh, Steve said. There are certain words that you have to accept and certain principles. Now, the beauty of our Constitution is, no, boys, that's that's not true. You can believe whatever you want. You can believe in God. You can believe in the devil. But whatever you believe, don't make that part of the state. And, by the way, the state is not superior to the individual. The individual is supreme. Now, all of that has been distorted over the years, and it's been particularly distorted over the past 20 years to make that central power very strong in that what, what Steve is saying to you is while the country has been going down with cronyism, capitalism, corruption, national, our, our soldiers are overseas, but yet we have more TSA agents who are looking for non-existent terrorists and picking up, you know, when you go through the TSA, and isn't it absurd to see old people have to get out of their wheelchairs and all kinds of searching going on? Well, there's no terrorists there. The likelihood of a terrorist come in, most of them have never even seen a terrorist. The FBI has profile on terrorists. They've never worked with these. I've worked with the FBI. They're not very impressive as an organization. And the reality, yeah, there's some good men and women in there. But the bottom line is that the country and the government has created words to marginalize those who protested. And what I, be, what I said a long time ago is be careful of who you associate in that protest. If you're co-opted by a group that wants you to be co-opted, be careful. Whether it's the Tea Party and you have already roots to another organization that's been discredited, protest on the basis of what you believe and what you will stand up for. But don't protest under a rubric of some kind that already has a hidden agenda. Protest in a way that the government can't put you under a rubric. They can't suddenly say to you, oh, well, he's a uh, Patriot Act. Uh, believer, anti-Patriot Act. I remember when I came out against the Patriot Act, Senator Feinstein, one of our great senators from San Francisco, said, those of you who protest against the Constitution, the U.S. Patriot Act, you know, you're out of control. And then I went on the next day on the radio and said, you know, Senator Feinstein, I would be more than happy to talk about your love life and your private lives because you have no problem intruding into my life. You know what happened, Steve? 
she shut up. Same thing with Biden.